Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. This week's video, I'm gonna show you how to start an IV. So IV stands for intravenous, which is a route of medication administration directly into the vein. It's one of the fastest routes of medication absorption and it is a uh, very common intervention in pretty much any kind of medical scenario. So in this week's video, I'm gonna go through all the supplies you need to start an IV, and then I'm actually going to demonstrate the procedure uh, to give you an idea of how it works. So in front of you, I have all the supplies you might need to start an IV. Now there are some minor differences in brands depending on what uh, your employer buys or what you buy, uh, but the procedure remains largely the same. So the first thing you're gonna need here is some kind of PPE. PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. These are gloves. Now these gloves do not have to be sterile. This is not a sterile procedure. Um, it's just something that has to be aseptic. So we wanna keep it as clean as possible. And this is just as much for my protection as it is for the patient's protection. Next up, we have the IV catheters, and these come in a variety of sizes. In front of you, I have kind of the common gamut of sizes. There are some extremes at both ends, uh, but they are all color-coded, co and those colors are pretty universal across healthcare, at least in the United States. So here we've got yellow, which is a 24 gauge. Now you can think of these as like uh, shotgun cartridges, where the smaller they are in number, the larger the catheter is. So 24 is very, very tiny. This is what we're starting on. Uh, small children. We've got a 22 gauge, a 20 gauge, which is kind of a standard sizing for IVs, and then we have an 18 gauge. Now, if you want to get into large bore IVs, you have uh, your 16 gauge and 14 gauge, uh, but those get quite a lot bigger. And in my experience, uh, unless you have somebody with really, really large veins, they can be difficult to get. Uh, gone are the days of getting bilateral 14 gauge IVs in your massive trauma patients. We're just not doing that quite as much in actual clinical practice. So we've got the catheters here. We have to have some kind of um, alcohol prep or chlorhexidine to clean the site. We have a start kit with everything you need inside of it. And then we have a pigtail and a flush. Um, now this is what's actually going to connect to the hub of the IV catheter and we're gonna flush some fluid through this and this is going to stay on their arm. It gives us easy access or easy port access to give them medications uh, as their care progresses. Generally speaking, IVs will be good for a couple days. You have to check them regularly to make sure they haven't infiltrated, which basically means that you've injected the medication into their skin. And when it starts to hurt a lot or starts to bleed around the edges, you might have to change it. Like I said, this usually occurs after uh, probably two to three days with an IV in. So going through the actual anatomy of each one of these uh, pieces of supplies, we'll just open one of these catheters here. So I've got the uh, 20 gauge and this is color coded pink. So as we open this up, we have a cover over the needle. Once I take this off, I wanna keep this off. I don't really want to re-sheath uh, it because that's asking for a needle stick. We have the flash chamber uh, back here and this is what you hold. And then we have the needle and the hub up front. So I'm gonna take that out here. And right here you can see that we've got the needle at the front and then this is actually the catheter that slides into the vein. So unlike IVs uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, this doesn't actually keep a needle in your arm. It keeps a clear plastic tube. So no matter where it is on the patient's arm, they can still bend and move and not worry about a needle sticking through the vein or ruining that IV site. Be aware though, if you do start an IV at um, the AC joint or anywhere where there's a crease or any kind of joint pretty much, they might occlude the flow of a uh, drip or of a medication you're trying to give, so they can be relatively positional. You'll notice this is a safety catheter, and almost everything on the market is going to be a safety catheter anymore. So as I put this into the vein, I've got this thing here, and like I said, this is kind of that bendy uh, catheter that stays in the body, and then I've got this needle. Now this is a spring-loaded uh, retractable device. You have some that put a cap on the end of the needle, but as I pull it out, I can just hit that button and it will retract the needle in and hopefully limit the possibility of IV sticks. Now, one thing I didn't talk about uh, at first, we've got this guy here. This is just a sharps container. We wanna make sure we always dispose of our sharps uh, correctly after we're done using them. So as we look at the chlorhexidine here, uh, there's a bunch of different brands. This guy, to start sterilizing the site, it's just a crack and it's going to allow you to clean the site in an aseptic technique. And then we've got our uh, start kit. And this guy has everything you need to kind of uh, get the ball rolling as far as securing that IV and prepping it. So this has a chlorhexidine swab in it already. We've got our tegaderm, which keeps the site clean. A tourniquet, now this isn't a tourniquet as like a cat 
tourniquet or something to stop blood flow. What it does is it stops venous return to the heart, um, but it doesn't stop arterial uh, flow to the arm. So it's going to kind of pump up the veins and make it a little bit easier to stick. We've got some tape and some gauze that you can cover the site with, or uh, basically if you miss, you can take the needle out and stop the blood flow uh, so you're not causing any issues. And lastly, like I talked about, we've got the uh, J-loop here and we've got a IV flush. So on these uh, devices, the only thing that is sterile on this is going to be this end with the blue cap. If I take this off, this is supposed to be a sterile field. We don't wanna to touch that or let that touch the ground. This blue cap will keep it relatively clean as we prepare it. And then we've got our flush right here. And same thing is that if I remove this cap, I don't wanna to touch there. That's technically a sterile field. I'm gonna take this, connect it to the lure lock and I can flush it through just enough for the water to come out and we're gonna let this and put this on the side. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put on my personal protective equipment. Like I said, you wanna make sure these gloves uh, fit as best you can and this just protects you as well as the patient. You'll never have a harder time getting on gloves than when you're doing it uh, in front of somebody or in front of a camera uh, as it happens. All right, once your gloves are on, I'm gonna start opening up some of the kit. So I like getting out the uh, J-loop and making sure that is flushed and ready to go first. So I'm gonna get the J-loop. I'm also going to get the uh, saline flush ready to go. And this saline flush is gonna go on here. Technically, you should be um, wiping the end of this lure lock with a uh, alcohol wipe prior to using it. So we fill that up and now I'm gonna set that aside. Now, like I said earlier, it's a little bit um, uh, unorthodox, but especially in an ambulance, a lot of times the patient's the easiest place uh, to put this stuff just because it's an easy arm's reach and it's a lot easier if you have a partner that you're doing it with as well. I'm gonna get the chlorhexidine I'm going to use ready to go. I'm just gonna keep that on the, in the package. And now I'm gonna get all my uh, tape ready to go and just prepare myself for success. Um, you know, if you've worked in EMS or healthcare for any amount of time, you've definitely started an IV without proper prep. And then you're trying to hold tamponade uh, on that IV while getting everything ready and it just doesn't work very well. So I've got the tegaderm here and I'm just going to make sure that tab's undone so I can peel that really easily. I'm going to get my tape set up. So I like just peeling two strips and then I'm going to just stick that to the edge of the table and this is going to allow me to secure uh, that IV and I've got the extra tape right there just in case. I've got my gauze pads just in case I miss or I need to mop up some blood and I've got the uh, venous tourniquet here and my IV uh, catheter. All right, so now I'm gonna take this tourniquet and I'm gonna put it uh, above the site I'm going to start. Now it's worth noting that when you're starting IVs, uh, generally speaking, you wanna start lower and go higher. Different floors and units have different things they like and dislike with IVs. In EMS, we go for AC sites just because they're more of a sure thing than smaller veins on the hands or wrists. But if you're like on a med surge unit, a lot of those nurses really like the IVs down here so that when the patient starts eating their food, bends their arm, it doesn't stop whatever medication they have going. Uh, for me right here, I'm starting it up here. Also be aware that if I Technically, if I miss up high, I don't wanna start anything lower than that just because I have a chance of inserting into the same vein. And then if I've uh, infiltrated up here, I've got a bad IV and I'm injecting fluid in here, it'll start just going uh, into the interstitial space and won't actually be feeding uh, into the patient like it should. So technically we start low, uh, go high when we're looking at uh, starting any kind of IV. So I'm gonna get kind of an idea of what I want to start here. Everybody has uh, veins in their AC and the um, anatomy is relatively similar, so this is a good place to start. I will say that uh, veins that you can feel are far better than veins that you can't feel. So if you can see something but it doesn't have any bounce to it, it's not always your best bet for uh, an IV start. And right here, I've got one that I can feel uh, right on this side of his arm. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chlorhexidine. And like I said, this isn't a sterile procedure, but it is aseptic, which means that I want to take this chlorhexidine and I want to start in the middle of the site and work uh, my way outwards. And I want to do this for uh, about 15 seconds. That's what the book says here. And just get that nice and saturated with the chlorhexidine. Now I'm going to take my IV catheter. Um, you can just rip these out the back. That's probably the easiest way to do it instead of like peeling it very specifically apart. I'm going to make sure 
uh, this catheter is out and ready to go. And usually I'll just slightly move that hub to make sure that it's free. Uh, sometimes you have these guys that they kind of um, freeze up and it's harder to feed in. When I hold uh, this catheter, I have my uh, middle finger and my thumb are going to pinch it and my pointer finger is gonna rest kind of on that hub and that directs it. The book says to put in at 45 degree angle. I usually feel like that's just a little bit too steep to really get um, a good stick, but uh, that's what the book says. So I go a little bit shallower and that's how you start. And then once you get in, you kind of uh, level it off there. So I've got Brian's arm right here. I'm going to go towards the skin. I'm going to insert and I'm watching the flash chamber to see when I have flash. All right, so right now I've got flash in the flash chamber. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. And as that's filling up, I don't wanna start threading this just yet. I wanna insert just a little bit farther and then I'm going to insert to the hub with that finger. You can also take this hand and insert it in as well. I'm going to pop the tourniquet because that can become a mess and I'm gonna hold tamponade. I wanna hold tamponade beyond the plastic catheter because if I'm holding it right there, it's not actually gonna occlude blood flow and I'm going to press pretty firmly. As I pull this out, I'm going to retract the needle and I'm gonna put this in a safe place. Now I'm gonna take this guy with this hand and I don't wanna to touch the end once this cap comes off, so I'm gonna be kind of careful with that. I'm going to take this end, insert it onto that hub. I'm going to hold this with my hand down. And now I'm going to flush five to 10 mLs of saline uh, through this IV just to make sure it's a good IV. Now, if this wasn't a good IV, what I'd see is I'd see some bubbling in the skin that's called infiltration. The other thing the patient might experience is just some uh, severe pain. It might hurt a little bit more. Now, this isn't a painless procedure, but as you're injecting meds, it shouldn't hurt very much. Uh, and oftentimes patients can even tell you they taste the saline if it's a good uh, IV. So I'm going to disconnect the saline flush uh, from this hub. And now this is not a clean site. So anytime I use that, I do uh, wanna make sure that I scrub it next. I'm gonna take my tegaderm and this protects my site. I'm going to undo that and put it right over the hub and the start of the J-loop. This keeps this site clean. It's going to keep it good for a longer period of time. It's also going to prevent uh, infections or any kind of contaminants from getting in there. And we can remove the paper around it. And then finally, we're gonna use our tape. So like I said, there's a bunch of fancy ways of doing this. The easiest way is just to take this tape, lay it over the top, take a second piece of tape, and tape the hub facing up the arm just like this. And now we can use this port to give meds anytime we want. Um, just a couple uh, quick points here. Uh, when it comes to starting IV, you're always starting the IV towards the heart. So I'm always pointing this needle towards his heart, up his arm, up his leg, or if you were starting like a scalp IV on a baby, down towards the heart that way. Uh, same with EJs uh, on the neck, you're gonna point that down. So in this case, I'm pushing up. I wouldn't wanna start any IVs uh, going this way. Now, like I said, this IV might be kind of positional, but he can bend his arm and it's not going to completely ruin that IV right away. All right, so for the removal of an IV, it's relatively simple and honestly, a lot of patients, especially somebody like Brian here, who's got a lot of hair on his arm, say this is a more painful experience than actually getting the needle to begin with. So right here, I'm gonna just start undoing the tape. Now, if you have some extra chlorhexidine or something like that, you can kind of rub it around uh, some of this uh, tape and it's gonna help it kind of come off with just that moisture and not stick as much. But really there's no way getting around the patient getting a little bit of a waxing uh, right on their arm. So right here, I'm gonna start peeling back that tegaderm, holding the IV uh, in place. And like, I obviously don't wanna to touch around the site too much um, just because that can cause uh, increased risk of infection. Next thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna take my gauze right over that hub and I'm going to slowly remove that. This can go away, it doesn't necessarily need to be a sharps container because there's no uh, needle, but there is some blood in it, so you have to be careful. And we can just take whatever tape we have left, tape it over the site, and you are good to go.